This is a 1993 AutoZam AZ1, and it's one of the most bizarre sports cars ever created. It's incredibly tiny, as you can see, made for tiny Japanese roads, but it has gullwing doors, and it's mid-engine with rear-wheel drive. It's a very small mid-engine, but it's there. And today, I'm going to review the AZ1 and show you everything. Before I get started, big news, this AutoZam AZ1 is currently listed for sale on Cars and Bids, my enthusiast car auction website. This is, as you can see, a red AZ1 with relatively low mileage, and it is a tremendously quirky, interesting sports car, and you can bid on it and buy it on Cars and Bids. So, once you've finished watching this video and checking out the quirkiness, click the link in the description below to go to the live auction for this AZ1 so you can buy it only on carsandbids.com. So let's talk AZ1. This is a K car, which is a car classification in Japan that gives car owners a break on insurance and taxes if they buy an incredibly tiny car with an incredibly tiny engine like this one. Now, most K cars are little hatchbacks, boxy things like this or this designed to maximize passenger space while still fitting into the incredibly restrictive small K car dimensions. But there are a few K cars that are also sports cars. Now, famous ones include the Honda Beat, which was mid-engine convertible, the Suzuki Cappuccino, which is also very desirable, but no K sports car is more famous or more sought after than this, the AutoZam AZ1, because, like I mentioned, the mid-engine configuration and the gullwing doors. Absolutely ridiculous for a car like this. When you think about that stuff, you think McLaren, Pagani, Lamborghini, and AutoZam AZ1. The AZ1's serious sports car credentials kind of fall apart a little bit after that, though. The engine is a 650cc turbocharged three-cylinder. That's 0.65 liters, and it has about 63 horsepower. Now, this car only weighs around 1,600 pounds, but still... 63 horsepower. Now, the engine comes from Suzuki. Suzuki originally helped design the AZ1, although it was Mazda who completed the design, and then it was Mazda who actually brought this car to market under Mazda's AutoZam sub-brand. So, what we have here is an incredibly tiny, incredibly quirky, mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, gullwing door sports car from Mazda and Suzuki, and today I'm going to review it. First, I'll take you on a tour of this car and show you all of its interesting quirks and features, then I'll get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the AutoZam AZ1 with its quirkiest feature, and that would be the gullwing doors. Now, the first thing you notice when you walk up to these doors that's weird is the keyhole is all the way in the front, which is okay, kind of odd, but whatever. The other thing you notice is there's no immediately visible door handle. You can't see a door handle anywhere in here. When you walk up, you can see a little cutout at the bottom of the door in the center, and that is where the door handle is. You stick your hand in there, you pull a little latch, and then you open up the gullwing door. And yes, this car does have true gullwing doors, as you can see, hinged at the top. Not scissor doors, not butterfly doors. These are gullwings like a Mercedes 300S or an SLS, the real deal with all the support at the top. They look like gull wings when they're open. Pretty insane for a tiny little car, only 130 inches long, like three feet shorter than a Mini Cooper, but it has gull wing doors. But anyway, next up, moving inside the AZ1, but I'm going to stay on the doors because there are still more interesting quirks to cover, like how the upper roof part of the door is actually a window. So you have the normal side window on this car, and then the upper half 
half of the door. The top is a window as well. This is a pretty insane feature. McLaren charges extra for this in their like butterfly gullwing door setup, but the AutoZam AZ1 has it, two windows per door. That's pretty cool. Now you can imagine there's kind of a problem with this because you're driving around and there's windows directly above your head and sunlight could come in and make things pretty hot in here. So these upper windows are kind of screened, you can see, to prevent like direct beating sunlight and cool things off a little bit in the interior. But just in case you want a full sunshade in order to block out any light from these windows, the AZ1 has that. This car came with individual upper window sunshades, as you can see here, and you can install them very easily in these windows. They just sort of click into place and you twist this little thing and then they're installed and that completely blocks out the sun. So if you're driving this on a sunny day, you don't want any like sun to be coming into the interior, you have these little sunshades. And as you can see, they say AZ1 on the top, facing out so that if you have the car parked with the sunshades on, everybody knows that it's an AZ1 thanks to the little sunshades. Kind of an interesting quirk. But I mean, next up, let's talk closing the doors from the inside. Always a bit of a problem with gullwing cars since they open so high. In this car, you have straps that hang down so you can reach up and close the door. Interestingly, the passenger side strap is black. The driver side strap is red because that's the sportier side of the car, of course. Now, like all gullwing door cars, there's additional chassis rigidity at the base of the door because you're missing a very important panel right here, like above the seats on the roof for extra rigidity. So they put more rigidity at the bottom of the door, but that means that the door itself has to be smaller, shorter basically, and that means that you can't roll down the window all the way. Instead, the only piece of window that rolls down is this sort of little smaller window within a window, that's all you can get to roll down in the AZ1. And here's a crazy thing. The windows in this car are crank windows, so you have to turn the crank to roll them down, and one full turn rolls the window all the way down, and one full turn rolls the window all the way up. That's all the window down you get in the AutoZam AZ1. But anyway, next up, moving on from the doors and onto the rest of the interesting quirks in this interior. One is the gauge cluster, which you can see, pretty small gauge cluster, tachometer right in the center and it revs all the way to 11,000 RPM with a 9,000 RPM red line. That's pretty impressive, but this car had a small engine and it was a sports car and that's how you got power out of a tiny engine like this. You had to go up to the top of the rev range in order to get it. You can see the speedometer is sort of smaller and over to the side like you might expect from a sports car. The tachometer is what you really wanted to focus on, or at least that's what they thought when they were building this at 11,000 RPM tach. Don't see that too often in a lot of cars. And next up, another interesting interior quirk in this car is the climate controls. You can see they're mounted here in the center and they're mounted vertically rather than horizontally like virtually all other car climate controls. Of course, this was done to save space in this tiny interior. You can also see in these climate controls that this car has air conditioning. You press this little AC button and it turns on the air conditioning in here. Now, the owner of this car tells me the AC blows ice cold, but it takes a lot of power away from this car when you turn it on. This car's only got about 63 horsepower. And when you turn on the AC, he says it's down maybe about 10 additional horsepower, which is a lot when you're only starting at 63. Now, the funny thing is it saps all that power from the engine, despite the fact that there are only three climate vents in this interior, one for the driver and two for the passengers. You can see that's all the air it has to blow out. Just a little bit of air through those three tiny vents, but it's a tiny car with a tiny engine, so it still robs a lot of power. Power. Now, three climate vents, not usually enough to cool down or heat up a car interior, but this inside is so small that three vents is probably all you need. Now, speaking of this interior size, there are some interesting quirks that come from just how tiny it is in here. For instance, the sun visor you can see is actually curved at the end in order to kind of fit around the A pillar because it's that tiny of a piece. They wanted to give you as much sun visor as possible, but it's so small in that space that they had to curve it at the end. Interior room in here is pretty tiny. As you can see with me sitting in this car, the driver's seat moves back, but the passenger seat is fixed in place. This is where you're sitting if you're the passenger, and it's pretty cramped in here, whether you're driver or passenger, because of that decision to fix the passenger seat. Now, as you can imagine with this tiny interior, another thing that happens is there's not really all that much storage space in here. You don't 
don't have a glove box in this car, so you can't put anything there. You don't have any storage in the center between the seats. There's just not enough room. You do have a little storage behind the passenger seat, so you can put some stuff back there. And then behind the driver's seat, if you fold it forward, you can see there's a little storage area at the bottom where there's a tool kit mounted, and that's where your tools are if you have to do some wrenching on your AutoZam on the side of the road. Behind the driver's seat, you also have the spare tire. You can see it's placed here almost like a rear seat passenger, and that is the factory location, the spare tire in this car. Very interesting. You don't see a lot of spare tires behind the driver's seat on the rear shelf, but that's where it is in the AZ1. Then again, it's not that crazy that the tire's back there because the tire is so small that it easily fits in that spot. This car has only 155 width tires from the factory, insanely small all tires, really, really tiny. This particular one has had the tires upgraded. Now they're 185 tires, a little bit bigger, but still tremendously small tires. That makes it pretty easy to fit the spare behind the driver's seat. But anyway, a common question with the spare tire might be, why is it in the interior when it could be up front? This is a mid-engine car, so the engine's back there, leaving room up here for a tire. And when you open this front compartment, you're even more perplexed because it was clearly designed for a spare tire. They've cleared out just enough space for it. You have the jack in here for the tire and there's like this little circular piece where it would go. Well, the owner of this car told me that early AutoZam models did have the spare tire and wheel up front like you'd expect, but then there were accidents, front end impacts with the car where the tire and wheel would get pushed into this area and cause more damage or even intrude on the interior and cause injuries. And so it was decided the spare tire moves into the cabin where that won't happen. So you have a little storage space up here as a result. Not much storage, of course, but enough space for a tiny little small spare tire sized item, if that's what you want. And speaking of the front up here, some great little quirks. One, I love these front circular lights, which are just so cute, both with this front compartment open or closed. They look great. They're fixed in place. So the front compartment actually has little cutouts in it to go around the lights and they stay there when it's up or down. And it looks cute in both configurations and it adds to the sort of eager, fun, exciting nature of this car. I also like the fact that there's only one washer nozzle. It's a tiny windshield, that's all you need. And there's only one wiper. Again, tiny windshield, you don't really need any more than that. But to me, the very best part at the front of this car is undoubtedly the air intake. It's kind of strange to see an air intake here because this is a mid-engine car, so the air is not being intaked into an engine up here. So what exactly is this for? Well, it turns out it goes to the climate control system. Air comes into here, and if you have the climate control system set to like outside fresh air, that's where the air comes from to go into the interior, into this front vent. The strange part is this front vent is off center, almost looking like some purposeful vent feeding a turbocharger, but that's not what it's for. It's actually for the climate control. Now, here's the craziest part about this intake. This car was later offered as a higher performance Mazda speed version, and one of the upgrades to that model was a larger front intake for a more aggressive look and more air, except the air doesn't go into the engine. So the Mazda speed had a larger intake <laughs> for more cabin air if you had the climate control on. Kind of a funny little thing with this air vent. And next we move on to the engine in the AZ1, this crazy mid-engine rear-wheel drive layout, normally the purview of Ferraris and Lamborghinis, but also in this tiny little K car. Now, one interesting quirk is accessing the engine. To open the engine compartment, you pull this little lever next to the driver's seat, which has an image of like a sedan opening up the trunk. Of course, Mazda just reused this lever from sedans where you pull it and it would open up the trunk, even though in this case, it's actually a coupe opening up the engine compartment. But anyway, you open this up and then you prop it in place and you can see the engine in this car. 650cc turbocharged three cylinder. Again, about 63 horsepower. That's all you got. One thing you'll notice back here is just how tiny this engine is. This is all the engine is in this incredibly small car. Tiny engine to match the tiny car. Now, interestingly, the engine bay, as you can see, is actually fairly large. You could get a reasonably sized powertrain in here, but because of the K-Car restrictions on how large your engine can
can be. This was all that Mazda AutoZam could put in this car in order to qualify it as a K car and get those tax breaks and insurance breaks for people who are buying this car. So there's certainly more room for a larger engine, but this is all you got. And speaking of the engine, another quirky little vent-related item back here, just like that one up front, only the vent on the driver's side, on the side of the car, is functional. This vent actually brings air into the engine, like you would expect. On the passenger side, there is a vent, as you can see, but when you look at it from the inside, from the engine bay, you can see it's not connected to anything. This isn't actually a functional vent over here. It's just there for symmetry and style purposes to make this car look even sportier and racier, which, to be honest, it kind of does. Vents on the side of a mid-engine car? It looks like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. Other interesting quirks back here that I think are worth pointing out. One, I love the taillights, these little circular taillights in back to match the cute little circles up front. And I especially love the fact that they only really had room for two little lighting fixtures back here. So one is the brake light and the other one is split half turn signal, half reverse light, because that's really all the space they had. Now the other cool quirk back here is at the bottom of this whole rear end, the diffuser has auto zam kind of cut into it like a stencil. And that just looks really cool. That's the only AutoZam badge on the outside of this car, the rear diffuser, and that is factory, and that looks really awesome. A very cool rear diffuser design with AutoZam written into it. Now, speaking of the rear diffuser saying AutoZam, you might be wondering, what exactly is an AutoZam? So this is the deal. AutoZam was a sub-brand of Mazda that was made throughout the 1990s, mostly, and it was sort of for cheaper entry-level cars, kind of to attract a more youthful entry level audience, a lot like Scion was for Toyota here in the United States. And it lasted for about 10 years, but then it fizzled out. And this was the car that they are most known for, the AZ1. But there were some other Auto Zam models as well, mostly smaller cars, K cars, little hatchbacks, that sort of thing. Now, as for this car, its history is kind of unusual. Suzuki developed the original concept for this car. Like I mentioned, they started the idea of the AZ1, but they decided they didn't really want to bring it to market. So Mazda took over and said, hey, can we continue developing this and actually sell it as a car? Suzuki said yes, and so Mazda continued and finished the development of this car, and then they decided to sell it as an AutoZam to try to bring people into AutoZam showrooms with this tiny little gullwing door K car. It was sort of a flagship model that would get people excited about the brand. But that explains why this car uses a Suzuki three-cylinder engine, the same engine used in the Suzuki Cappuccino, which was Suzuki's own K car sports car. And then there was this, which also had the same powertrain. Now, interestingly, Suzuki eventually saw the AZ1. They thought it was cool, and they said, hey, we want that back. And so they sold a version of the AutoZam AZ1 as the Suzuki Kara. So this little car, so well known for being the AZ1, there was also a rare version of it called the Suzuki Kara. They made about 500 of those. Now, as for this car's success, well, it wasn't really all that successful. Despite the cool gullwing doors, it was more expensive expensive than the competition, the Cappuccino and the Honda Beat, and they didn't really sell that many. About 5,000 AZ1s and Karas were sold over the production run in the early 90s, compared to like 35,000 Honda Beats and about 30,000 Suzuki Cappuccinos. This is definitely the rarest of the K-car sports cars, although this is also the most desirable with its mid-engine design and gullwing doors. This is the coolest K-Car sports car. And finally, the last interesting quirk with the AZ1 is how cool it looks when it is exploded. Basically, everything open, the front, the back, the doors, it looks so cool and so distinctive. No other K-Car looks like this with everything open. It has a Lamborghini or Ferrari or McLaren look to it with everything open. Just a crazy thing to see, a tiny little 60 horsepower K-Car with gullwing doors looking so exotic with everything open. One interesting thing I noticed, by the way, with the doors open, there are reflectors on the doors front and rear, which seems kind of odd. A lot of car companies put reflectors on the doors so they don't get hit if you have the door open on a dark street and someone's driving by, but what's going to hit these doors? Like a drone? What, what is their expectation here? Why do they need these reflectors? I wonder if it's regulatory, but otherwise it seems kind of unnecessary to have reflectors for safety purposes on a gullwing door since it's not really at risk of getting hit. But that is the exploded AZ-1, kind of the ultimate quirk 
of a very quirky little car. And so those are the quirks and features of the very quirky AutoZam AZ-1. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the AutoZam. <laughs> and the first impression you get when you're in this car is it is tiny, incredibly small in here, incredibly difficult for a reasonably sized adult to fit inside this car. The owner of this car is six feet tall. He told me that he thinks six feet is the absolute maximum to be comfortable in this car and I'm six foot three. Now I will say my knees are up against the dashboard, not a good situation. I can sit up in this car and as you can see it works, but my head goes into the window area and then I can't actually see anything forward because I'm looking at the windshield frame. So I, in order to see, I have to kind of duck down like this. Now I can drive the car at six foot three, like it's fine, I'm doing it and it's acceptable. The problem really becomes like if I had to have some sort of evasive emergency maneuver, it wouldn't be good. My knees are kind of blocking the full range of motion of the steering wheel, especially in kind of an evasive, you know, crazy situation if I had to do something quick. Now, another thing that's interesting about this car, the owner told me, you know, the AC works great, but it does set power. He's so right. The AC works great, I have it on right now, but I've been turning it off <laughs> unless I'm at a stoplight because it robs so much power from this car, can't actually realistically use it. Okay, but I do wanna talk about something that is shocking to me, which is this car actually drives pretty well. If you get over how incredibly tiny it is in here, it drives pretty well. For one thing, the gear lever situation is fantastic. The clutch is really, really easy. Easy to figure out, easy to operate. Sort of reminds me of a Miata. Like, there's no vagueness, there's no BS. It's, it's very linear travel. Then the gear selector is like very nice. No vagueness, you just kind of throw it into gear. It feels like a Porsche almost, this tiny little gear lever. And it's actually kind of fun. And then you have the fact that this car is surprisingly eager to get going. Like, it's fun to drive. It's a little turbo car. You have to keep the revs up if you want to have any fun. And if you floor it, you get up in the range and you floor it, it's an eager little car that makes a lot of noise. You're low to the ground and actually the road holding is fantastic. Even on these tiny tires, the car, it steers incredibly fast. You're mid-engine, so you have the best, you know, design layout in terms of weight distribution. And it's just fun, like it, <laughs> it actually feels shockingly fun to drive. When I found out I'd be reviewing this AutoZam AZ1, I thought to myself, you know, that's gonna really suck. And it, it does in the sense that it's too small for me, but it is fun otherwise. Like I wish I were a few inches shorter so I could really enjoy this car because it's shockingly exciting to toss around. Now I feel terrified that if anything hits me at any moment, I will be killed. But you know, if you like little lightweight cars, and I, I kind of do, I owned a Lotus Elise and I think that's kind of a cool area of cars then this is such a cool one because it's the lightest weight little car you'll ever have. I do wish it had a little bit more power. I think like 120 horsepower in this thing would really open it up. And I've heard that people have done Hayabusa engine swaps. It's a little engine and even EV swaps would be cool maybe, but it could use a little more power. Now the owner tells me the car can go highway speeds and it's no problem. It's just that it, you, I mean, you're, I'm looking up at a Mazda 3, like there's a Mazda 3 in front of me and it's like, oh wow, look at that tall car. And so this is really best for like, if you can get Canyon Roads to yourself or maybe even a racetrack and tune it, get a little more power out of it, that's where it would be fun. Or just for the novelty of having such a bizarre vehicle. I got a picture here of the car next to a big pickup truck. And oh my God, look how tiny this thing is. That gives you an idea of just how small this is. It is seriously, incredibly, unbelievably tiny. And that's just sort of the only real drawback to this otherwise surprisingly fantastic little car. And so that's the AutoZam AZ-1. This car is ridiculous. Gull wing doors and a mid-engine rear wheel drive layout in a car that is feet shorter than a Mini Cooper. Everything about this is insane. It gets a ton of looks and attention on the road and it's surprisingly fun to drive if you can fit inside. Anyway, now it's time to give the AZ-1 a Doug score. 
starting with the weekend categories and styling, I've never loved the look of the AZ-1. I've always felt they had to make major style compromises to get the gullwing doors the mid-engine to work, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Acceleration, it's slow, and it gets a 1 out of 10. However, handling is a joy, really thrillingly fun, and I was totally surprised it gets a 7 out of 10. Fun factor is great if you can fit. It would be more fun if it was faster, but the shift action, the steering, the handling, all wonderful, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Cool factor is big given the rarity in the doors, and it gets a 7 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 26 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. The AZ-1 doesn't have much, but it has air conditioning and a radio, basically what you need, and it gets a 2 out of 10. Comfort is terrible, the ride quality is okay, but it's so cramped inside that it's difficult for most drivers, and it gets a 2 out of 10. Quality is okay, materials are decent, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Practicality is incredibly low. It has some storage space and two seats, so it's not terrible, but it ain't great, and it gets a 2 out of 10. Finally, value. These sell for fifteen to $20,000, and truthfully, they're a great buy if you fit. Gullwing doors, mid-engine, a car nobody has, and a good driving experience, but again, that's if you fit. It gets a 7 out of 10 for a total daily score of 19 out of 50. Add it up, and the Doug score is 45 out of 100, which places it here against relevant cars. I was genuinely surprised by the AutoZam. I thought it would be a two-trick pony whose tricks were the gullwing doors and the mid-engine, but it's actually a great car to drive. I would legitimately consider owning one of these if I could fit inside.